Greetings, denizens of the Empire. It's Jabara here, and welcome to my second official Black History Month collaboration, or Untold Black History 2. Please be sure to check out the other fantastic additions to this collaboration, courtesy of the several other content creators who took part in this initiative. The link to this playlist can be found below and at the end screen. For those of you who are new to my Black History series, welcome. The purpose of this collaboration is not to regurgitate the usual black history narrative that we hear about in mainstream media and school systems, but to bring attention to the lesser known topics that are just as compelling, insightful, and inspiring, if not more so. This initiative will also include stories, facts, and information from around the world, from both in Africa and the diaspora alike. And rather than focusing exclusively on themes like slavery and segregation, we aim to focus on lesser known topics that are just as thought provoking and not relegated to just oppression and struggle. And while one of the key goals of this collaboration is to steer clear of negative topics like slavery, my contribution ironically today will be about a slave. Perhaps one of the most intellectual slaves who forced 18th century whites to reevaluate their erroneous belief in their own alleged cognitive superiority. It is no secret that most of Sub-Saharan Africa's civilizations lack the written word. This fact is also true for many other civilizations around the world like the Great Inca Empire, but it seems that Africa and Africans tend to face the most scrutiny over it. All too often this reality is presented as the primary piece of evidence to discredit any and all African history or intellectual potential. The lack of writing systems among black civilizations was also used as a basis to discredit other aspects of academic or intellectual achievement, such as architectural or mathematical prowess. The ability to write down numbers allows for math to be conducted with more ease and accuracy, as it effectively allows one to record numbers and equations while only having to memorize small parts of it at any given time, eliminating the need to remember every single step of the calculation process. This is precisely why we use electronic calculators today in the modern era. Until fairly recently in history, Western scientists firmly believed that Africans were an inferior version of human beings, incapable of complex mathematics due to not only a lack of writing, but there was also a well-established belief that blacks had innately more limited abilities to calculate or comprehend complex numbers and mathematical systems due to a naturally stunted neurological or intellectual capacity. 18th century writer David Hume had this to say regarding the topic in 1741. I am apt to suspect the Negroes to be naturally inferior to the white. There scarcely ever was a civilized nation of that complexion, nor even any individual eminent in either action or speculation. No ingenious manufacturers amongst them, no arts, no sciences. Such a uniform and constant difference could not happen in so many countries and ages if nature had not made an original distinction between these breeds of men. Not to mention our colonies, there are Negro slaves dispersed all over Europe, of whom none ever discovered any symptoms of ingenuity. Though low people, without education, will start up against us, and distinguish in every profession. In Jamaica, indeed, they talk of one Negro as a man of parts and learning. But it is likely he is admired for slender accomplishments, like a parrot who speaks a few words plainly. While today, virtually every part of this assertion can be picked apart with relative ease, this viewpoint was widely accepted amongst most Western thinkers at the time. We do, however, have contemporary European traders in Africa who recorded quite the opposite, expressing their great astonishment with the quick-witted and intellectual Africans that they encountered in their dealings, easily outdoing them in speed, accuracy, and efficiency of their calculations, as we see in this vivid account, written by Thomas Clarkson in the year 1788. It is astonishing with what facility the African brokers reckon up the exchange of European goods for slaves. One of these brokers has 10 slaves to sell, and for each of these he demands 10 different articles. He reduces them immediately by the head to bars, copper, ounces, and immediately strikes the balance. The European on the other hand takes his pen, and with great deliberation, and with all the advantage of arithmetic and letters, begins to estimate also. He is so unfortunate as to make a mistake, but he no sooner errors than he is detected by this man of inferior capacity, 
whom he can neither deceive in the name or quality of his goods, nor in the balance of his account. One man's mere existence also corroborated this. Born in the year 1710 and forcefully taken to Virginia in the year 1724, Thomas Fuller was from West Africa, but the exact location of his original homeland is unknown. It is believed that he originated somewhere between present-day Liberia and Benin. However, American psychologist Edward Scripture had a strong belief that Fuller hailed from the Basari people. Scripture studied Thomas Fuller extensively due in part to his focus on studying the human mind from a scientific perspective. In fact, he is considered one of the original founders of modern psychology as we know it today. In the late 19th century, psychology was only just beginning to become an academically accepted scientific practice. During this time, it was only considered an experimental science, because prior to this era, the study of the human mind was considered to be something that couldn't be quantified with the validity, accuracy, or consistency necessary to conduct proper science in accordance to the scientific method, which requires a large degree of standardization. Because of this, his work faced significant challenges because it took much more compelling arguments to confirm his findings, as there was not yet a standardized or academically accepted baseline for the practice. Scripture was appointed the head of the psychological laboratory at Yale University to take on the grueling task of turning psychology into an accepted scientific practice akin to astronomy or physics. In other words, proving that African people had cognitive abilities equivalent to those of whites was an even more difficult task. Edward Scripture's belief in Thomas Fuller's Basari origins was due to what he perceived as similarities between his mathematical processes and those practiced by the Basari people. As mentioned earlier, most African civilizations lacked the written word, but nevertheless, many of them still developed various complex counting systems and intricate symbols to represent numbers and mathematical concepts, as well as advanced training techniques for memorization. The Basari people used a system of string tallies which consisted of knots tied in groups of six in a manner that may have bore similarities to the Kipu system practiced by the Inca civilization of South America. By the way, it's important to note that the Inca civilization is responsible for creating some of the most impressive engineering feats in the history of the world or relying entirely on a knot-based system to conduct their math. Engineering feats so sophisticated that modern-day scientists still struggle to figure out just how they did it. After speaking with a Basari elder, scripture found that the Basari counting system was performed by a corps of specialists who were specifically trained in the memorization of sums, a system based on the number 6. This six-based system was also included as a small piece of a much bigger practice that was tied into a divination system, where six shells would be used symbolically to interpret images. This process of six shells would then be repeated six times, resulting in a six-sided image of a divine message from a deity. Over in Nigeria, the Ifa literary corpus was the divination process practiced by the Yoruba and surrounding peoples prior to their Christianization and it shared some similarities with the Basari system. I've discussed the Ifa process in great detail in another video. It was essentially the same as modern day binary code used in computing. I'll be sure to include it in the end screen. The system used by the Basari as well as the Ifa system used by the Yoruba were but a few among many examples of highly sophisticated concepts that were ubiquitous to traditional African art, mathematics, and architectural design that all incorporated fractals. In fact, fractals are a mathematical concept that have only recently been discovered by Europeans in the past two centuries, but have been endemic to most of the African continent since times immemorial. Today, fractals are an invaluable concept that is the foundation for all computing and biological models found in the realms of modern day science. I know that ads can get pretty annoying and repetitive, but please hear me out. It's been quite a few years since I've been using Happy Hippo products and I can confidently say that their traditional medicine has changed my life. They help me remain focused and energized, help with my anxiety, and put me in a generally good mood. I've recommended them to my friends and family with nothing but positive results, and that is why I recommend them to you and anyone else who can benefit from them. In fact, they even have a few types of African traditional medicine as well, like Akuwama and Kana. You can get a 10% discount on your entire order site-wide if you use my promo code FN10 at checkout at happyhippo.com.
Thomas Fuller may have very well have been among the Bosari specialists mentioned by the elder that scripture interviewed in the 19th century. In the year 1724, Fuller was sold to Presley and Elizabeth Cox, the owners of a large plantation in Virginia. There, he quickly impressed the regulars and professionals alike with his extraordinary calculation abilities. According to a paper written by Fay and Alexander, among his mathematical feats, he was able to accurately multiply two nine-digit numbers, state the number of seconds in any given time period, and calculate the number of grains of corn in any given mass, all the while not even knowing how to read or write. In another interview, a study was conducted on him by the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. Upon interviewing Fuller, they asked him how many seconds were in a year and a half, and after pondering the question for two minutes, he correctly answered with 47,304,000. He was then asked how many seconds were in the life of a man who lived to be 70 years, 17 days, and 12 hours. After just one and a half minutes, he again provided the correct answer. 2,210,500,800 seconds. In fact, Fuller's abilities were most prominently referenced by abolitionists over a century after his time. Up into the 19th century, the alleged intellectual inferiority of black people was used as one of the primary justifications for the practice of slavery, a doctrine that made it legally acceptable to treat black people little better than animals, as they weren't deemed equal to the other races of mankind. Thomas Fuller was an example of what we know today as a mental calculator. Historically, mental calculators were in high demand in an era long before electronic calculators. Mental calculators are people who have the prodigious ability to work with large numbers and conduct complex math in their head with relative ease and without the aid of written or technological means. This isn't a learned behavior either. This is an innate ability that develops within the brain and is simply honed and complemented by formal training. From a biological standpoint, this gift of prodigious calculation abilities is the most prevalent among those who are right-brained. Very specific parts of the brain exhibit increased levels of activity and blood flow during the calculation activities including the parietal lobes, the anterior cingulate, and the frontal cortex on both sides of the brain. The activation of these regions during the process of conducting mathematical or calculation activities is notably absent in the brains of the general population. In other words, mental calculators are genetically gifted, and the fact that an African man had this prodigious mathematical ability took every notion of black inferiority and turned it on its head. It proposed that Africans were capable of exceptional intelligence from a genetic level while also proving that indigenous African education systems had the facilities to recognize, utilize, and further build upon them. In other words, Fuller's mere existence proved all of the notions of black inferiority wrong. Unfortunately, despite his undeniable genius, Fuller spent the rest of his life working on the farm of the Cox family, as they refused to sell him, despite substantially large and tempting offers from many curious inquirers. He thus never received a formal education, nor did he ever even learn how to read or write. This may have been due in part to the way that he perceived educated men. In one account, a man who he performed calculations for acknowledged how it was a pity that he had never been allowed to receive an education, in which Fuller plainly replied, Many learned men be great fools. Thomas Fuller died in the year 1790, and the author of his obituary also remarked upon the shame that he never received a formal education, pondering the extent of his potential had he been offered the same opportunities as white men. Had his opportunities of improvement been equal to those of thousands of his fellow men, neither the Royal Society of London, the Academy of Science at Paris, nor even a Newton himself need have been ashamed to acknowledge him a brother in science. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the rest of the content in this Black History playlist, collaboratively created by these other fantastic YouTube channels. You can find a link to the playlist down below. For sources, check out my website, fromnothing.info.
For links to products, Patreon, Discord, or anything else to support or become a part of the Empire from Nothing, click on my link tree down below. I hope you all enjoy the video, and always remember, we don't come from nothing. <laughs>